can and will be used against you in a court of law. You have the right to an attorney, and if you cannot afford one, one will be appointed to you. If you can all stand up against that wall, cars are running outside for you, you'll be taken to the station separately. This is going to be fun. What do you want to bet? The first thing that they're going to do is start accusing one another. Probably, but it's not likely it was one of them. Women don't commit acts of violence this intense. That would be unnatural. That's just a stereotype of women as passive victims. And it restricts our understanding of their motives and relationship to violence. Think of the woman implicated in Abu Ghraib. True. And there's also evidence that Jack Ripper may have been a woman. Really? Yes. And plus, I've seen evidence that points to violent acts committed by females being on the rise. I guess never was a bit of an exaggeration. But I do think we have to be careful about contributing to the moral panic that we created this generation of women who are violent and nasty. Because I've heard that violent, like murder and attempted murder among girls has actually remained unchanged for 20 years. Fair enough. We both need to keep open lines. Anyways, the suit looks nice, expensive. That means it was probably business or mob related. Uh, um, maybe a revenge killing? Thinking jilted partner? Could be. Um, although that wouldn't explain why the three women were standing around the body. True. One or more of them could have done it. Could have been on behalf of the partner or love or domestic issue. Right, we need to consider that too. Do you want to do the interviews and all the background and alibi checks? Sounds good. So, quick and dirty of it. Victim is Jack Livingston. Businessman like we thought. How shady is up for debate? Depending on who you talk to in the organized crime unit. FYI, all of the suspects have refused an attorney. For now change in the foreseeable future. Um, the first person that we're going to interview is Agnes Orbein. She has no relation to the victim, but she is the mother of one of his former business partners. Former? How did it end? Badly. I am not guilty. It has to be Erin, his ex-wife. She hates his guts since she found out he was cheating on her. She went round the bit, bend a bit, actually. Unstable. Poor thing. Do you know who she cheated on him with? My son's second wife, the whore. Did your son know? No, and I don't have the heart to tell him, not after all that happened. That bastard cheated him out of tens of millions, ruined his life and career. No one will hi consider hiring him now. He's a laughing stock, and he's now in rehab to deal with his alcohol issues. After which, he'll have no choice but to live with me. Oh, the shame. Sounds like you have a lot of reasons to hate Mr. Livingston. Of course I hate him. He ruined my son's life. I want justice. Would you say his death is justice enough? I want a lawyer. Well, I would say we have the overprotective mother. That's the next one. Um, I checked out Ernest Orbein. He is in rehab for alcohol abuse. Hasn't left the house in two weeks as per her requirements. Any thoughts on why it might not be her? Well. I mean, mothers have been known to do anything to protect their children, and especially in terms of revenge, but I just have this feeling that it's not her, you know? I think we should be critical of our instinctive judgments in this case, because of, as we've seen with custody cases that we've dealt with in the past, children are often handed to their mothers on the basis of a mother's innate ability to nurture and care for a child. True, and as we've seen, that's not always the case. Exactly. So, I'll get the next suspect, the ex-wife, Erin Livingston, or Erin Rayner now. Um, she has gone a bit around the bend. Uh, she spent a weekend in the psych ward and has been seeing a psychiatrist since just before they split up, which is about six months ago. The divorce was finalized two weeks ago. All right. Forever. Hello, Miss Rayner. I understand you're the ex-wife of the victim. That doesn't mean I wanted him dead. Although, I may have hoped something terrible would happen. <laughs> Why? He ruined my life. Him and that little bimbo he paraded around on his arm whenever her husband's back was turned. And that mother-in-law of hers came up to me to my face and asked why I didn't keep better control of my husband. Like I could. Did you kill him? <laughs> I wish I had. Talk to the mother of the bimbo. <laughs> you 
You were referring to Janie Orvine? Yeah, the bimbo. Blonde and perky and perfect and can't keep her hands off of other people's husbands. Interview her. Go ahead. She's definitely guilty. Okay. Here's the last one. I see what you mean by unstable. Yeah, but I don't think she's the most likely one to do it. That's true. She kind of seemed like one who would not be too scared to tell us that she committed the crime. Proud even? These things just get complicated so fast. I mean, the press is going to have a field day with this one. The mother, the monster, and the whore, all in one case? I mean, this is like dessert to them. Three psycho women all committed a violent act. Yeah, it'll be like that moral panic in the 90s all over again. Totally. Look, I know what my monster-in-law and crazy kid you're saying. They think I did it. Did you? No, look, I love my husband. But since the whole debacle, he's not all the man I need. <laughs> if you know what I mean. Jack was nice, charming, larger than life, in all the right places. Okay, so did your husband find out you were having an affair? No, like I said, I love him, and I don't want to hurt him. I know, I know, I'm having an affair. But I have needs too, and what he doesn't know won't hurt him. So if you had to choose, would you give up having your affair for Ernest? Yes! So you really don't want him to know? Exactly! I wouldn't do anything that would tip him off. Even kill the man you were having an affair with to keep it a secret? You know, I think I want a lawyer. Well, that got us nowhere. She seems like a woman who definitely enjoys her sexuality. Very true. Um, do you want me to look for other possible sexual partners? Maybe, but be discreet about it. We don't want the media framing her as another vexatious vixen. Yeah. Um, I checked out other possible suspects. Nobody jumps out as having method, motive, and opportunity. Unless if it was something like Russian mob guy with a paid sniper on the second floor of the adjacent building. Yeah, these three women definitely seem like our top suspects. Good thing we weren't working with a profiler. They probably would have ignored the women as uh, unable to have perpetrated the crime. I know. Until it came to trial and everything came out. Um, and they, well, the jury realized that they fit the um, profiles for unnatural women. The, mo the mother, the monster, and the whore. Exactly. These women don't fit our preconceived notions of femininity. Well, we best get to work then. We've got a long piece ahead of us, and it will no doubt be sensationalized by the media.